Hi, I'm Pete Duncanson, Media Arts Pastor, and I'd like to take a moment to say thank you for being here. If you are physically here with us today, please be aware that for your safety, we are practicing social distancing and ask you to respect those that are using precautions as well. If you'd like to know more about what is going on right here at Central, whether upcoming events or just learning about who we are, check us out on the web, Facebook, and yes, we even have an app for that. If the ministry at Central has blessed you and you would like to give, you can do that multiple ways. By using the physical boxes located in the back by the sound booth, through online giving, or even through our app. Thanks again for joining us today, and God bless. Good to have you here. I'll tell you again, we had just a beautiful time last night. An opportunity for us as a church to say to a specific group of people in our community, thank you. And we're going to do more of those. I think it's just a powerful outreach. I believe some of those folks will probably be here with us in the 11 a.m. I know some of you were there, but if this is not your home church and you were at that business blessing last night, thank you for being here. If you're joining us online, Thank you as well. Brother Ken is a friend of ours here at Central, and of course, Sister Pam and I, and I don't think he needs much of an introduction, but let me update you on a couple of things. This past uh, early January, after a fall, his wife passed away. Sister Barb was a huge part of everything that happened in that ministry. He may tell you how many countries she was in with him, traveled to uh, just scores of nations around the world. They put uh, lots of miles on themselves, on airplanes. He is uh, one of a couple of people flying with United that's over 10 million miles. As somebody who's flown a couple of hundred thousand miles, I can only imagine the nightmare that 10 million miles is. <laughs> Some of his books are here out in the front foyer, but many of them are with United somewhere else, and uh, that's okay. We have those, and mostly they're there. Uh, a lot of them are gone from last night, but you can see what's there and then order if you would like to on his website, of course. He is an incredible speaker in not just churches, but events, inspirational, motivational events. He encouraged our business people last night on how to think right even in wrong times, how to think good even in bad times, how to think positive even in negative. Did you see what I was doing there? Opposites. I know it's a 9 o'clock service and you're tired. He's from Yakima, Washington. We picked him, I picked him up yesterday morning in Dallas. We're taking him back tonight. But I want you to help me make welcome this morning our great 85-year young friend, Brother Ken Gobb. Brother Ken, come this morning. Do you want this down there? Everybody excited? Amen. Well, but you weren't there last night. We did have a great time. I enjoyed it. We had fun. I believe Christians can have fun. Don't you think so? We need to smile sometimes. When we had my wife's memorial, my pastor did an awesome job, and uh, it was played on television throughout Israel and other countries, and it was just amazing. But everybody was crying. And then my pastor said, somebody asked Ken's wife one time, where did Ken actually grow up? She said he never did. And then we all laughed and had a little joy. We need joy, amen? If you weren't there last night, I told about going to TSA in Seattle. <laughs> oh, man, I tell you, it's, traveling is something else anymore. You got to stand six feet apart in the airport, and yet they crowd you in an airplane, people on both sides of you. It don't make sense. But anyway, uh, it just was crazy. But they said to me in the TSA line, they said, did anybody put anything in your luggage that you didn't know about? What a stupid question. And I told him, I said, I can't answer that. If I don't know about it, how can I answer you? He said, forget that. He said, have you been around anybody that's had COVID-19? I said, I don't know. 
I'm not a doctor. I don't walk through the airport and say, you got COVID? Check them out. You know, I don't do that. So, I, you know, I don't know. He said, forget that. They, they want you to forget everything. And so then he said, have you been tested? I said, yeah, I've been tested. When did you test? Yesterday. And what was the outcome? I said, I tested positive. And the other two guys came over and said, what are you doing flying if you tested positive? Where did you test? I said, I tested myself. <laughs> the guy, he cracked up. He said, you can't do that. I said, I did. I tested myself. He said, how'd you do that? I said, I opened the Bible, and I read in the Bible that God is, we are created in God's image. God is a positive image. I'm going to believe that. And so I said, when he tested me, he tested me positive. And all my friends are positive. He said, wow, <laughs> go on through. And so I went on, and as I was leaving, he wasn't even a Christian, and he was witnessing. The next guy came in and said, who was that guy? He said, oh, he's through the airport all the time. And he said, he tested positive. And I said, yeah, we're created in the image of God. And God's a positive personality, so when he made all of us, he tested us positive. And one guy said, wow. We all tested positive, and the guy was witnessing. Can you believe that? How many tested positive? Amen. I have. I'm serving God, and we can be happy. Amen. Serve God. Everything's happening. I'll tell you, I'm so excited about God and what God's doing. Some kids were in the cafeteria line at the school, and there was a basket of apples there, and this teacher had put a sign up said, Take only one apple. God is watching you. They got down a little farther, and there was a basket of cookies. And some kid had put a sign on, take as many cookies as you want. God's watching the apples. <laughs> I like what's happening, don't you? God is a big God, and good things are happening. And, and uh, yes, my wife was something else. I took her to over... 100 countries. We, I took her to Israel 150 some times. She took 10 trips to Israel on her own with women groups. And uh, I took her around the world seven times. And then she went to heaven without me. That was crazy, you know. <laughs> but anyway, she closed her eyes on earth and opened them in heaven. How many be thank God for the hope we have? Amen. We got something to be happy about. Well, this morning, I want you to turn to Exodus. If you have a Bible, I want you to turn to Exodus. I'm going to talk about matters of the heart that I think is vitally important. And I, I've been studying the book of Exodus, and uh, God is teaching me some stuff. And I may write a new book on what I'm thinking about, but in Exodus, it was written by Moses, 1,446 years before Jesus was born. And uh, Pharaoh was a wicked man. Moses was a man of God. And there was a war between good and evil, just like today. How many know there is? There's not a war just between the Democrats and Republicans, but there's a war between good and evil today. We got evil people in the world. How I many to believe we got them in America making wrong decisions? And it's just the way it is. But here is a great story here where the Christians were persecuted. We may have some of that in the future. We're losing some of our rights. How many know we are? And we better stand up for what we believe in now. You agree with that? I, I serve God. I'm going to live for God no matter what. And uh, some people get worried about everything. People live in fear, and they have a lot of problems, and there's so many suicides. A little seven-year-old boy in our state committed suicide last week. Seven years old. Wanted to go to school. No school. All kinds of stuff. So people live that way. But here I want to show you some. Number one, God has a plan for our life. 
There is no doubt about that. The Bible talks in Jeremiah that God said he had a plan for our life to give us good stuff. How many believe that? To bless our lives, to encourage us, to help lift us up, to give us answers. And so God's got a plan for our life. And when I read this about Moses here, God had a plan for him. You know, I, I don't believe in luck. People say, man, that guy was lucky. I don't believe in luck. I don't even believe in... People say, what about Friday the 13th? That's just a day before Saturday the 14th. You say, what about walking under a ladder? You shouldn't do that anyway. Amen? <laughs> what about running and have a black cat run in front of you? I, I hate cats. But anyway, <laughs> God made cats. My wife, she liked cats. I don't like cats. I like dogs. Cats are stupid. All cats go to hell. But dogs go to heaven, maybe. But there's animals up there, I guess, because God's Jesus coming on a white horse. Where'd he get that? So when I think about this, you know, I, I think about Moses and how God used Moses. People say, well, I can't be helped. I'm a basket case. I said, that's the way Moses started out. He was a basket case, wasn't he? In the river. And you know the story. And Pharaoh was evil. He killed the little boys. They threw them in the river. How sad. And drown them. We think of abortions today, and we got a big problem with that. Isn't that true? And so when I think about this, he saved the girls but threw the boys away. And it was really something. But Moses was uh, rescued by Pharaoh's daughter. Now, Pharaoh was a very, very wicked man. And he was a wicked ruler. We don't need wicked rulers, but he was that kind of a guy. But we, God has a plan for our life. I don't believe when I, when I go to a foreign country, and I know pastor goes to foreign countries, I appreciate this pastor and his lovely wife. And thank you for singing that song this morning. You're going to do that next service, aren't you? I want to hear it again. All right. How many believe we're not alone? God's on our side. But when I go to a foreign country and people say, Ken, good luck. You ever had people say that? Good luck to you. I hate that. I don't believe in luck, good or bad. No, I believe in the divine blessing of God. And when somebody says, may you be divinely blessed, I think that's wonderful. And last night, Pastor prayed a divine prayer. A divine prayer over the business people. I thought that was so great. Bless her. What person wouldn't want a business bless? Everybody does in this time especially. And that was such an honor for this church to do something like that. Your pastor's got some wonderful ideas. I like this guy. And I like her. And when I, if I have a 70th anniversary, I'm going to bring them out to that too. And... Sister Pam said she don't sing as much anymore. Well, that's crazy. She should be singing every day. But if I bring them out, she's going to preach and Pastor Doug's going to sing. But maybe we'll cancel that one. But anyway, <laughs> I appreciate them so much because they're positive people. Moses was this kind of a guy, but God had a plan for the life. And then number two, God always keeps his promises. You never have to worry when God promises you something. Isn't that true? You never have to worry because he will take care of it. He said, fear not. He said, I'm sick closer than a brother. He said all kinds of things about his promises to take care of us, and he promised to work miracles in our lives. Sometimes it don't always work like we expect it to work, but he promised that. I like somebody that keeps their promises. How many like that? Some politicians promise you everything, and then when they get in office, they forgot about all the promises. Say, what about that that he promised? Now, well, here, Moses loved God, and God kept his promises with Moses, and he said, I'll take you out and deliver you from the Egyptians that are persecuting you, and I will take you to a land of milk and honey. I will do this for you. It was a great promise. And they stood on that promise, and Moses kept them on to that promise to think about what God was going to do for them. And, he, and Moses complained. He said, God, I can't speak good. I stutter. I, I'm having trouble with my speech. 
And God said, that's why I gave you Moses. God always has a plan, doesn't he? And he gave him, gave him Aaron, I mean, to speak for him and be his mouthpiece. And he did just that. So God keeps his promises. And when I think about that evil heart that Pharaoh had and how God gave him that heart so that he could show him some miracles, the Bible said Moses and Aaron believed God. I, want, I thank God for people that believe God. How many thank God for that? I really do. I thank God for your pastor and his wife. I, they are great friends, and they love God, and they believe God, and they trust God, and we, we all have to be that way. We have to be the kind of people that God wants to believe in, to know that we are doing what God said we're going to do. We're going to trust him. We sang about it this morning. We're going to believe him. And so God always keeps his promises and said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And obedience is a key. Some people don't obey God, but obedience is a key. I want to tell you something that just happened to me uh, just a few days ago. I have never told this like in church service yet. But I got on the airplane and uh, they upgraded me, of course, because of my flying 10 million miles and put me in first class. You know, the church paid my uh, airfare, but they, the upgrade is cost money, but they do that free for me. And I sat down in, in the first row, my seat, and um, a man came in and sat down beside me. I'm going to win him to Christ. How many believe I am? I'm going to witness to him, at least. And he's, I didn't know he was a Christian. He was going to lead me to Christ. It was crazy. And we sat there, and he talked about his life, and he asked where, what I do. And I said, I speak. He said, where do you speak? I said, I speak everywhere. He said, what do you speak on? I said, many subjects. And he said, well, what, who brings you in? I said, people. And I never gave away what I actually did. And I was going to try to witness to him, but he was in the process of going to witness to me. Then he told me, he said, you know what? He said, uh, we have to um, do what we have to do in life. I said, yeah, I know that. And he said, things don't always work out like we expect. I said, I know that. I said, my wife just passed away a few days ago. And he said some nice words to me. And then he was sitting there and he said, oh, no. Oh, no. I, oh, my God, he said. And I thought, what is wrong with him? And he reached in his bill, or not his billfold, his uh, uh, briefcase, and pulled out a roll of bills, money. Was that big around, with a big rubber band around it? He said, God just told me to give you all my money. I said, what? I was freaking out myself. Uh, what is he talking about? He doesn't even know who I am. And uh, he don't know that I'm in ministry. And he said, and then he started talking to me. He said, you got to listen to God when he talks to you. I said, yeah, I know that. <laughs> I'm, uh, you can't believe how my brain was saying, who is this guy? And so, and then he said, oh, no, again. He said, I've got another $10 bill in my billfold. I have to give you that. So he gave me that $10 bill. I said, wait a minute, what, what are you doing? He said, well, sir, I know you have some personal needs. Now, I never told him that. How did he know that? How many believe God can speak to people? Amen. And he said, you have some personal needs, and God wants me to give you this money. He said, I live in Eureka, California. I have a wrecking company that hauls cars, and I'm going to start one in Atlanta, Georgia, where my family is, and give up the one in Eureka. And so that's where I'm headed. We were going from Denver to, to Atlanta. And he said, uh, when God talks to you, sir, you have to listen and obey him. And I thought, who's he talking to? I, I try to obey God, but God must be telling me something. And I said, well, you don't want to give me all this money. It was a wad of bills, and uh, it was something else. And so then we started talking. He said, 10 years ago, he said, I was living like the devil. But he said, I went to a church in Tucson, Arizona, and uh, he said, Harold Warner was the pastor. And I thought, well, I know him. I preach in that church. 
And so he said, Harold Warner was a pastor. And this guy took him to church and he said, I gave my life to Christ. He said, this guy was there, he was speaking, said he was crazy. I never heard anybody like him. He told jokes in church. And he said, I just never heard anything like that. And he said, the next thing I knew, I'm standing in front with a whole bunch of people giving my life to Jesus. Wasn't that wonderful? So he gave me his testimony. He said, this guy was from Yakima, Washington. He was Ken Gobb. And, he, and I, I, I about fell off the seat. He said, I said, Ken Gobb? He said, yeah. said, I'm a fan of his. I, I buy his books. I got his tapes. He's got a video channel now on his uh, website, and I listen to it. And he said, it's something else. And I said, well, I'm Ken Gobb. He said, no way. Pull your mask down and pull that thing down. I hate them things. Some people look bad enough, they ought to keep it up there. But anyway, I, I pulled it down, and he said, oh, my God, you are Ken Gobb. I said, yeah, I am. Now, was that a miracle or what? When I got back to the hotel, I counted the money, 50s and 20s in that roll of bills for me personally, not for the ministry. He wasn't for nothing else, he said. It was for your personal needs, and I really had some. And there was $1,800 there in 50s and 20s. I tell you, I cried. God is a big God. Amen? God will keep his promises. He will take care of you, pandemic or no pandemic. How many believe that? I, I went around my property and put olive oil on all four corners of my property and quoted in Psalms 91.10 that no plague will come near my dwelling. I put that all around my property and around my house. And God has taken care of us and helped us, and I give God praise for that. Amen? God is a big God. He cares about us. He's concerned about every need that we have. And so when he promises something like he did for Moses, I will take care of you. I will bring you out to a land of milk and honey. I'm going to work a miracle in your behalf. Moses believed that. When God promises something, we shouldn't have any questions about it. There should be no questions. Do you agree with that? God said, I'm going to do this thing for you. So obedience is a, is a big key, but who hardened Pharaoh's heart? God did. God hardened his heart. Why did he do that? So that he could show him some miracles. So he could show who he was. Even when Moses was talking, he said, what will I tell the people? Tell the people that I am sent you. We are serving an I am God. Amen? And he's on the throne, and he's concerned. And so what happened was they, uh, Moses came in and threw his rod down before the king, the wicked king, and it turned into a serpent. And the magicians did the same thing, and their rods turned into a serpent. I thought, that is really something. They couldn't do everything, but they did that. I thought, that was, they did some kind of magic trick. But then Moses' serpent ate up their serpents, and God did a miracle for them right there. And I, as I was reading that and I underlined it in my Bible, I thought, man, this is something. Then God did something else to prove to Pharaoh that he was a God of miracles, that God is a God of tremendous miracles. Then he turned the water into blood. Every pool, every body of water, the river killed all the fish, turned a whole thing where the Egyptians could not drink water because it was all turned into blood. Was that something or what? Then the Bible said that God did another plague to prove to Pharaoh that he's a God of miracles. And so he caused frogs to come up from everywhere. And the Bible even said the Egyptian magicians did the same thing. They brought frogs too. Wasn't that something? You know, frogs in the bathtub, in the bedroom, everywhere. Wasn't that something? God brought all those frogs in there, and then God destroyed them. I tell you, when I read this in in the in the Exodus here, I think, man, this is something. And then they another plague happened, and everything got filled up with lice. The dust of the ground turned into lice, and everybody was scratching. What? Was that wild or what? You'd think Pharaoh would give up and let them people go. But his heart was so hardened that he wouldn't do that. 
I tell you, if you have a hardened heart, you won't listen to God. Isn't that true? The Pharaoh did not listen. And then God did something else. He sent a plague of flies. There were just flies everywhere. Millions of flies. But Pharaoh, the Bible said, said he would not let the people go. And then something else happened that's quite unusual. The, God did it here in Exodus, I think uh, down a little farther. Yeah, here all the cattle of the Egyptians died, but not one cattle died of any kind of the Israelites. God always takes care of his people. Do you believe that? And in the midst of this pandemic, in all the trouble that people are facing with fear, people committing suicide, we got unbelievable suicides that are up among policemen, even doctors, all kinds of things like that are happening. But you know, God is still on the throne. And with all the problems that's happening, the God of Moses is still in control. Do you believe that? God's still in control of your finances, of your health, of everything about your life. And so that's exactly what happened. Then they were covered with boils. Boy, that'd be a tough one, wouldn't it? They were covered with boils. Even the animals, everybody thing had, had boils. That was another plague. And then another thing happened. God rained down hail with fire. Now, I, I was reading that again this morning. I thought, how did he do that? Hail and rain came down, and the hail and the fire went across the ground. Was that amazing or what? You'd think that would convince Pharaoh, but it, it, it just didn't do that. And after that, the locusts came and ate up all the trees and the shrubs and the bushes and all of that. I thought, wow, another plague. That should have turned the heart of Pharaoh. But he said, I will let them go. But it was a half-hearted commitment. Some people have half-hearted commitments. I did a sermon a few days ago in Florida, and we had a, a great crowd of people, and I preached to the pajama crowd. You know, there's a pajama crowd now in the church. They, they, are, they don't go to church. <laughs> they just are in the crowd at home, I guess. But anyway, this is what happened here. And when God sent all of this these plagues. You'd think that would soften the heart of Pharaoh, but it didn't do it. And then the Bible said God did something else. He made it dark for three days, so the Egyptians had no light, but the Israelites had light. Now, how did God do that? You, you think God ain't a God of miracles? I don't believe God's a God of miracles. He's bigger than any problem you'll ever face. We never tell God, how big the problem is. He knows how big the problem is. We tell the problem how big our God is. We say, God, I thank you that you're bigger than the problem that I face. I've said that many times. I've said that I don't know how many times in my life, that God, I know you're bigger than the problem. You will answer prayer. You will work a miracle. Moses believed in these kind of miracles. And then after that, what happened, you know, the firstborn of all the cattle, the firstborn of the people were killed unless they saw the blood on the doorpost. How many have read that? Blood on the doorpost. And then the angel would pass over. It was the first Passover for the Israelites. What a miracle. And God took care of them, but yet there wasn't a household where somebody did not die. I, I read this, and I've been studying this a lot, and I thought, you know, God listens to the people, too, because the Bible said God listened to Moses and Aaron, and they talked and communed with God every day. That's why we ought to be. I want God to talk to me. I want God to listen when I'm praying and believing for a miracle. Amen? I want to believe him that he is bigger than any problem that I'll ever face. God will answer prayer. We... We got so many cards, thousands of, of calls, on, not thousands, hundreds of calls on, um, on Facebook. We got almost a thousand cards from all over the world, flowers from the president of Greece and from the uh, Netanyahu in Israel. And I think all the things that people say, you know, 
We got some wonderful sympathy cards. I never did like sympathy cards until recently. I thought, well, they're okay if they got scriptures in them. You know, if they give you a word of encouragement, just to, but just to have sympathy. I always thought sympathy cards should be given to people that are getting married that aren't Christians. I thought that'd be a good idea, you know? But anyway, we got a lot of cards and all of that. But a lot of people said to me, Ken, you will make it. It will work out. God will meet your need. God will answer prayer. We were off 20, 25, 26 weeks. I got canceled in Canada the last two weeks of this month. Can't get into Canada. Can't go overseas. All kinds of stuff. But God is still on the throne. And so I keep believing that God, if you can send a man to sit with me on an airplane and give me $1,800, you can do anything. He didn't even know who I was. God is so big. I think we don't understand how big God is. And, and certainly a wicked king like this didn't understand it. And he refused to do the right thing. But God told the Israelites to go forward. He said, go forward, not backward, go forward. He said, I will go before you and after you. See, God's always got our back. Come in and believe that. He's always got our back. He's always there to answer prayer. We got. If we're going to do something, we have to do it in advance. You don't just wait to take a vacation. You don't say, I'm leaving in five minutes on a vacation. You probably planned it in advance. Everybody's got to do it in advance. We have to be ready for heaven in advance. How many know that? One lady was, had never been married. Nothing wrong with that. But she'd never been married. And so when she died, they read her will. And her will said that when the, the funeral happens for my life, I want women pallbearers. I don't want any men to carry my coffin. She said the men didn't take me out while I was alive. They're not taking me out when I'm dead. So she only wanted women pallbearers. <laughs> so she got it. She had that in her will. Even she got ready in advance. We have to get ready in advance. And God told them to go forward, and I'll let you walk through on on dry land. And the people complained. How many believe people complain? They complained, and they were going to impeach Moses. That was the first impeachment, and it didn't work. <laughs> And then they tried it again. It didn't work. It never works good. But anyway, when I read this, I thought, man, Moses just kept hanging in there and believing God. I love somebody that never gives up. I talk about Abe Lincoln. You know, he had so many defeats. Abe Lincoln had a complete nervous breakdown, believe it or not. His girlfriend died. And he had a breakdown, but he ran for office and ran for, what did he have? 16, 17 defeats, one after another. And if I'd have been alive in, in Abe Lincoln's days and been his friend, I'd have said, Abe, quit the politics. It ain't working for you. But he never gave up. And then one day he became the president of the United States of America. I love people who never get up, give up that are honest and that love God. And Moses was his way. He never gave up. And God told him to go forward, not backward, to go forward and serve me. In Exodus 14, he said, fear not, stand still and watch me do a miracle. Don't fear, number one. People today are, are hooked on fear somehow, afraid of all kinds of things. I'm not afraid. I serve a risen God. I've been leading people to Christ on the airplanes and so on because I don't have fear in my life. The Bible said perfect love doth what? Cast out fear. You guys know that. You go to a good church, you hear good preaching, got a good pastor, you understand that. So, you know, when I think about this, I think he, we don't have to fear today. I don't have fear in my life. I believe God will help us. Yes, we have struggles. We have things we don't understand. We have things we can't figure out. But, you know, God is trying to help us. There are stupid things that happen in this world. In Washington, D.C., they got a sign downtown that says, Warning, road will be wet after rain. <laughs> I think 
Somebody said Nancy Pelosi put that up. I don't know, but, you know, it's something to think about. <laughs> I thought, man, there's just crazy things that happen, you know. They asked me the other day, you want to get on the plane? I said, no, I'm getting in it. I'm not going to get on it. I'll fall off, you know. But anyway, <laughs> they always ask you the wrong question. Somebody asked me the other day, they said, do you lived in Yakima, Washington all your life? I said, not yet. I'm still here. And when I was talking about my birthday, I just had a birthday in December, turned 85. And somebody said, well, uh, uh, what year? I said, what year? I have a birthday every year. It's every year. How many have a birthday every year? <laughs> How many don't want to have one? But anyway, God is still on the throne. He's going to help us. And this is Moses found this out. Fear not. Stand still. Shut up and don't do anything. Just stand there and stand still. And know that I am God and will work a miracle in your behalf. That's what he told them. And they started to leave. Before they left, I read where they borrowed jewelry. Money and uh, jewelry and all kinds of gold and silver from their neighbors. It was a borrowed thing. But when they left, they took it with them. And they stopped and asked people for their gold and silver. Can you imagine somebody come up and say, now, Pam, you got any gold in your purse? I'll take that. Give me those, that ring. Give me that uh, other bracelet, you know. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? People did things like that. And they, when the Israelites left to go to the Red Sea, did you know they didn't leave broke? They left with plenty of money, plenty of everything. God took care of them. And they headed to the Red Sea, and there he complained again, another impeachment thing for Moses. But it didn't work, and Moses hit his rod down, and the sea parted, and the Bible said they walked through on what? Dry ground. They didn't even get in the mud from the water. Can you believe? How did God do that? That water parted on both sides, and they walked through on dry land, and the Egyptians were coming with their chariots. There were 600 chariots with trained Men in those chariots, these were officers, trained men, and they went in after them. Can you believe that? And the Egyptians were chasing them. Pharaoh said, get them. Don't let them leave. He had a hardened heart. They went in the water, and what happened? How many believe God could change the tire on your car? I don't see many believing that, but it could happen. God took the wheels off the chariots. That's what the Bible said. <laughs> I thought that was awesome. I just, when I read that and said it, I thought, that's great. I love when God does something like that. And the wheels came off. God took them off. And the chariots crashed 600 of them. And the Bible said that every man in those chariots were killed. Their bodies washed up on the side when the water came back. Everyone died. Bible said not one survived. And it proved to Pharaoh that God is a great I am, that God will do what he said he promised he would do. He would answer prayer. And he did just that. And he's doing that even today. Fear not, he said. He's my, our strength, our song, and our salvation. Amen? And he's still that today. I tell people, don't worry. I, I talk on the airplane to people that are worried all the time. I, I, see, I witnessed to a pilot the other day. And I said, if you can't get me where you're going, I can get you where I'm going. He said, what does that mean? What a great opportunity. And I witnessed to him because we can get people where we're going by serving God. I can't imagine people that don't serve God. I can't imagine people in this hour that don't trust God. It seems like everybody should be a Christian, doesn't it? Everybody can win somebody. I talked to, did a soul winning seminar the other day in the church, and I said, everybody can do it. And one lady came up to me and said, I can't, I'm not good at it. You don't have to be good at it. You just witness. You know what Jesus did for you? Share your faith. Amen? Say, the same God that did those miracles for Moses, he's doing them for us. He's going to help us. Amen? She said, well, I won't know what to say. I said, well, just witness to people. She said, but I'm shy. I said, that's okay. Lead shy people to the Lord. 
There ain't no excuses with me. Just lead shy people. She said, I won't know what to tell them. I said, that's all right. They're shy. They'll wait. You'll figure it out. It'll happen. I'm always witnessing to somebody. I think it's exciting. And God is a miracle-working God. And he proved that to these people here, that you can trust God. I believe we can do it in this hour. How many believe we can? You know, if you're here today, I know that that God can touch your life. I'm not going to embarrass you, but I, I bow your head with me for a moment. And just believe that the God of Moses and Aaron is the God that's alive today. Jesus told us perilous times would come. These are the perilous times. He said men would be lovers of their own selves. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, uh, fairness, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God. Jesus told it 2,000 years ago this is going to come. It's here now. And your number, you never know when your number is going to be called. People drop dead every day. You never know. That's why it pays to be ready. Moses stayed ready. He trusted God. You can do that today. If you're here today and you say, Ken, I may not be a wicked person, but if I died before I went to bed tonight, I'm not ready to meet God. Just as you close in prayer, would you just pray for me? Would you raise your hand so I could see it? Anyone like that here that would raise that hand and just say, I need help in my life. I need Jesus. Anyone like that? Don't be embarrassed. Just say, I, I just need help. We all need prayer. How many that are here say, I love God, but I, I face situations in my life and I could sure use a miracle. Would you raise your hand? Yes, God bless you. God is a big God. He cares about every need that we have, everything that we face. I believe that. Father, I pray for these that raise their hand to, that have needs in their life. You're the God of Moses. You have not changed. You never change. And I thank you, Lord, for helping all of us to serve you, to be a soul winner, to touch lives. I thank you for this church, Lord, that reached out to business community and prayed a blessing on their business. I don't know a lot of churches that do that or a lot of pastors that care about the town. But Lord, I thank you for this church. I thank you for Pastor Doug and, and Pam, Lord. I thank you for their lives and thank you for their witness to people and their love for others. Thank you, Jesus, for helping us today. Make us great soul winners. Help us talk to somebody today. Buy a cup of coffee for somebody. Buy lunch. Do something while we have the opportunity and live for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand of praise this morning. Just give him a good praise. Not me, the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Isn't that great? I love that story. Brother Ken was telling me on the way home from the airport yesterday. and thought, how amazing is God? If you've read his book, God's Got Your Number, you know that this was kind of a revisit after, how many years ago was that? 40 years ago that that was. And uh, what, a, what a promise that God would keep, not just for him, but for you as well. Brother Ken is here with us this weekend, and even though we don't do a past offering now, you are always welcome and encouraged to give in an offering and to designate that giving, of course, to his ministry. They remain on radio around the world, many hundreds of stations, and you can designate any time uh, this month, of course, any time, but uh, today as well. And if you do that, we'll make sure all of that is forwarded to his ministry also, come on and stand with me this morning, and let's uh, let's have Brother Ricky lead us in a chorus this morning before we get out of here. Thank you for 
being here this morning. What a great turnout on a cold Sunday morning at 9 o'clock. But God has met us and warmed our hearts, right? John Wesley said on the boat ride that he had uh, come to be a missionary, felt totally as a failure. And uh, on that boat ride, he said, my heart was strangely warmed. He cried out to the God that he had seen in the worship of the Moravians back home. He knew something was different. They had something he did not. He cried out to God and said, my heart was strangely warmed. God transformed his life and his ministry, made him an incredible, as you and I know, an incredible witness. You and I can do the same thing, right? We can share our faith. I thought of a creative way, and we did that last night through just inviting business people to come and say thank you for what you do. We don't want anything from you. I think you can do the same thing for a coworker, or a neighbor and just say, I don't, I don't want anything from you. I just want to tell you that God's good. And he's been really good in my life. And then just watch what God does. Father, thank you so much for this chance today to be in your house and to be encouraged by the living and loving God that we serve. Bless my people, Lord, as we worship you today and then as we exit this place. May your presence go with us now and always in Jesus' name. Come on, let's worship.